Hello students. Today I am going to discuss about modes of transfer. Binary information received from an external device is usually stored in the memory for later processing. That means whatever the information we are receiving from the I/O devices that is stored in the CPU. Okay, so that for computations. Okay, so the data transfer to and from peripherals may be handled in one of the three possible modes. So those are programmed I/O, interrupt initiated I/O, and direct memory access. So let us first discuss about the programmed I/O. In the programmed I/O, uh, I/O operations are the result of I/O instructions which are returned in the computer program. That means here we are achieving the uh, data from the I/O devices in the form of programs. That means we are writing the code for accessing the data from the I/O devices. Okay, so each data item is initiated by the instruction in the program. So each data item that means uh, for receiving each and every data item we need to write an instruction in the program okay generally the transfer is to and from the cpu register and peripherals peripherals are nothing but the io devices the transfer is in between the cpu and the io devices okay so once the data transfer is initiated the cpu is required to monitor the interface to see when the transfer can again be made that means uh, first it will check the interface that the transfer can and can again be made or not okay so there is a disadvantage in the programmed io that is in the programmed io cpu stays in a program loop until the io unit indicates that it is ready for the data transfer that means cpu has to unnecessarily wait for the data transfer without doing any useful work okay so this is a time consuming process because it keeps the processor busy unnecessarily or needlessly okay this can be avoided by using an interrupt facility okay so the second mode of data transfer is interrupt initiated io okay so in this interrupt initiated io it uses a special commands in to inform the interface to issue an interrupt request signal when the data are available from the device in the meantime the cpu can proceed to execute another program okay so here is some special commands can be used to the interface that means they are given to the interface that so when the data is ready then you send some interrupt signal then cpu stops the work whatever it was doing so stops the work and it reaches to the it services the io routine okay so when the interface determines that the device is ready for the data transfer it generates an interrupt request through the computer so when uh, the external interrupt signal is uh, came when it when it detects the external interrupt signal the cpu momentarily stops the task that it was processing previously and immediately it branches to the service program to process the io transfer so after completion of this io transfer it again return back to its work that it was originally performing so this is what our interrupt initiated io so in this cpu needlessly need not to wait for the uh, data transfer okay when the data is available at the interface interface sends the interrupt signal to the cpu so meantime cpu can do some useful work okay so then it immediately stops that work and come back to service the io request after completion of the interrupt io uh, transfer after completion of the io transfer it again return back to its work okay here there is no wastage of cpu cycles so the third mode of data transfer is direct memory access so in the direct memory access data is whatever the data we are receiving from the io devices that data is transferred to the memory directly to the memory so the interface transfer the data into and out of the memory until through the memory bus so unit memory unit through the memory bus okay so this transfer is initiated by the cpu by supplying the interrupt uh, interface to 
with the starting address and number of words needed to be transferred and then proceeds to execute other task so how much amount of data is to be transferred and how much amount of data uh, is to be stored in the memory that is initiated by the cpu okay it just initiates the transfer and it proceeds to execute the other task when the transfer is made the dma request memory cycles through the memory control controller so when the data is available at the interface the dma controller requests the memory controller for the memory cycles because it has to be stored in the memory so when the memory controller grants the uh, request uh, the request is granted by the memory controller the transfer it it transfers the data directly into the memory when the cpu requires the data it directly takes the data from the memory okay so the data here is directly transferred to the memory interface is transferring the data to the memory and it is gaining that data from the memory so this is what our direct memory access so let us take an example of a programmed io so in this we are having cpu and io device and there is an interface okay when the data is available at the io device it initiates the io bus it transfers that data through the io bus okay and interface when the io when the data is available at the interface it enables the data valid line it enables the data valid line interface stores the data in the data register okay and it again enables the data accepted line okay and then it sets the status register that is nothing but f flag flag bit or we can also say that f the status register is to 1 okay so again in the program we will write we will write the code for checking the status register first we will check the status register when the status register flag bit is 1 that means some valid data is available in the data register okay so then cpu access the data from the data register okay the first thing cpu accepts the data from the data register and it uh, clears the status register value it clears the status register value to the zero upon clearing this status register value zero the data accepted line is to be disabled when the data accepted line is disabled then only the device can transfer the other byte of data to the interface this is what our programmed io the entire transfer the entire transfer can be uh, um, can be done in three instructions let us take an flow chart so let us discuss it with the flow chart the transfer of each byte requires three instructions the first instruction is first it will check the status register value it reads the status register when the status register is one when the status register it reads the status register value for the checking the flag bit when the flag bit is one then it reads the data from the data register if the flag bit is zero again it go for the reading the status register value this is our first instruction that is reading the status register and this is in the second instruction which is nothing but checking the flag bit and the third instruction when the flag bit is one and the third instruction is read the data register so that means the transfer the we transfer transfer the data to the memory so if the operation is completed then it will stop the program it will uh, continue with the other program that means next instruction if the operation is not completed it goes through the again the first instruction again it reads the status register but in this entire programmed IO, as I have told you earlier, there is a disadvantage in this programmed IO. That is nothing but the CPU is wasting time while checking the flag instead of doing some other useful processing task. This is the uh, disadvantage of programmed IO. Okay, so that we go further. The alternative thing is interrupt initiated IO that we have already discussed. So that it is the modes of transfer. Thank you.